Morning people. Today on F Politics, we have Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden using the death of George Floyd to support genocide in Palestine. Meanwhile, I spoke to some of the people at what Suella Braveman likes to call hate marches. So here's Oliver Dowden's interview on Sky News with Trevor Phillips. Okay, the conflict there is rather spilling over here. Tens of thousands marched uh, in support of Palestinians in London and other cities. Here in London, there were four police officers injured. There were fireworks thrown into the crowd. We saw videos of two carriages essentially being taken over by demonstrators. And now, first off, you have the presenter painting those marches as if the defining feature was violence and intimidation. You heard the language that he used, right? That the violence in the Middle East had spilled out into the streets of London, implying that the people protesting for peace had turned the UK into a war zone. Now, you may have seen footage of violent scuffles with the police or people calling for violent resistance, but I have two things to say about that. One. As I've said before, we're talking about crowds of hundreds of thousands of people. If you randomly select 100,000 people from across the UK, there are going to be some dicks. Take football by comparison. Last year saw a 60% rise in disorder at games, with incidents at 53% of matches. And the most common incident reported was pyrotechnics, i.e. fireworks. With over 400 arrests for violent disorder, and that's over football. We're talking about genocide here. And yet, look at the logic that Oliver Dowden uses. The danger is okay. they... they inadvertently lend a legitimacy to some more extremism that we've seen in those marches. All right. Would you say that an ordinary family attending a football match is legitimizing a police officer getting punched in the car park? But that's the logic that Oliver Dowden is using to say that the people of the UK should stay quiet about his government support for ethnic cleansing. The second thing I'd say is, can we please have some goddamn perspective? Because this is what the people on those streets are begging the government to stop supporting. According to Gaza's health ministry, a convoy of ambulances was trying to drive south, taking the wounded to Egypt when it was hit. There was no denial from the Israelis. They did this, they say, because they had to, because they claim the ambulances were carrying terrorists. All the rest are simply details. The details he talks about amount to a reported 10,000 dead now in Gaza. It was the only route south still open. Reported Israeli shelling hit at least one car in a convoy. The images show children among the dead. Those who have managed to move south into the so-called evacuation zone, it is just the same. This is Khan Yunus, the place that is supposed to be safe. Men, women, bundles. So for the government that is actively supporting the ethnic cleansing of two million people to accuse the people who are marching for peace of legitimizing extremism is fucking insanity. But he really goes off the deep end with this one. And I have to say to you, I'm a bit disappointed that if you look at the moral indignation and the clarity that we saw after the murder of George Floyd in the United States with the Black Lives Matter movement, we haven't seen across civic society the same kind of moral clarity showing that Jewish lives Matter. The most basic and factual interpretation of what he just said is, if you protested against the murder of George Floyd and you campaigned for equality for black people afterwards, but you don't support the ethnic cleansing of two million Palestinians in Gaza in response to the terrorist attack against Israelis on the 7th of October, you're a hypocrite. Okay, let's start with what he just said was anti-Semitic because it acts like support for Jewish people and support for the war crimes being committed by the Netanyahu government are the same thing. Therefore, he's verbally putting blood on the hands of all Jewish people, thus increasing the risk of hate crimes against them. Second of all, it's a little insane for him to use the Black Lives Matter protests as a sort of, why aren't you like this now? When his reaction to the Black Lives Matter protests was to say this. We have made it clear to schools that it is illegal to teach the concept of white privilege as though it were undisputed fact. Well, if white privilege was really a disputed fact, it's certainly not disputed by your government because your government's official stats say that you stop and search black people seven times more than white people. Your government's race report said that simply having a black name on your CV makes it 80% harder to get a job. And the British Medical Journal reports that black women die four times more during childbirth than white women. So white privilege is a matter of governmental, economic, and medical fact, which is why people were protesting. And your reaction was to tell teachers they can't tell the truth. Our politicians should be standing shoulder to shoulder with Jewish and Muslim Brits and calling for a ceasefire specifically in respect of any bombing of civilians in Gaza. Instead, our deputy prime minister is using the murder of George Floyd and the resulting cries for racial equality to justify the bombing of roughly two million Palestinian people. But somehow this bit gets even scarier. Particularly look at this march uh, that's happening uh, uh, potentially in London next Sunday. On Armistice Day. Yes, and I think that 
that a time when it's meant to be solemn remembrance of the sacrifice of previous generations and upholding our British values. Since when is it against British values to be against the extermination of thousands of innocent people in effectively a concentration camp because people in Gaza can't leave and they're being killed there? Because that feels like the sort of thing that people who wear poppies and remember the past should be especially against. But by British values, what they really mean is government policy, which is why they're working on plans to make it so that anybody who questions British values can be treated as an extremist. Which is literally textbook fascism, pretending that anybody who questions the government's policies is somehow unpatriotic. And this was clear from the right-wing counter-demonstrations yesterday, who spotted me filming them. Stand and fight. Stand with us and fight. Love your country, love your nation, and reject far-left extremism. Femi, you are a disgrace to this country. You are opposed to democracy, so no reason you're siding with Hamas because you can't accept the will of the people. You hate this country. Can we get a massive boo for Femi, please? Boo! Boo! Because apparently questioning the government's Brexit plans makes me a terrorist. But if you want to know what the people on the streets yesterday were actually calling for, have a listen. Why are you here? What do you want? Um, we want to end the occupation of Palestine. Cool. Yourself? Yeah, I want to cease fire immediately and end the occupation. Yeah, the ceasefire and for everyone to be free. And what would you say to Rishi Sunak if you could? So <laughs> many, I can <laughs> say all the words on here. Yeah. <laughs> so many are literally just stop being such a heartless monster and see that people are dying and we need to do something. Yeah. Anything else? We want him to stand against the genocide. He's not standing yeah. against it. Why are you here? I'm here to support the Palestinians who are struggling, who are uh, suffering under um, you know, all of the bombings that are happening in, in Gaza. Um, and we are just here to demand a ceasefire, uh, to get humanitarian aid in, to get a humanitarian uh, you know, stop to the bombings, um, and to make sure that people can live their lives in peace. And, and what do you guys want? Ceasefire now. Yeah, we want a ceasefire and, now. And the UK government to stop the licensing and selling of weapons uh, all around the world, globally. This is not a, um, a retaliation. This is a pure genocide of innocent people that have been driven away from their homeland. And this is to stand in solidarity. Every race, every creed, every colour, every gender, every ethnicity, every sovereignty is here to represent human life. And it's because of the human life we are all united. And we want to say a message to the leaders of our country, shame on you, shame on every single one of you that you have allowed this to happen at this day and age. And we will make sure that we do not, rep we do not elect you in, okay? You have let us down, you have got blood on your hands. And you know what? I am absolutely furious, absolutely furious that human life does not mean human life for Palestinian. We stand with the Israel people that support us and we represent everybody irrespective of faith and religion. Human life should be valued across the globe in an equal way. Thank you. Thank you very much, appreciate it, that's Thank awesome. You. you heard her, that's the exact same vibe as the Black Lives Matter protests, and yet Oliver Dowden tried to use the Black Lives Matter protests to tell her to shut up and go home. Again, as always, it is your job to make sure that the Jewish and Muslim people in your community are safe, because people like Oliver Dowden are making things worse. I'm Femi, this has been F Politics. have a great week.